I only vaguely understood what racism and discrimination was. From what I saw on television, I couldn't understand why black people weren't fighting back. I watched sad and confused as adults and kids were being hit, sprayed with fire hoses and attacked by dogs. I saw college kids just sitting at the cafe counter minding their own business while white kids were hitting them in the head, pouring mustard and ketchup on them and yelling mean, horrible things. I didn't know anything about slavery or Jim Crow, but I knew what I saw was wrong. I was mad at them for not fighting back, mad at the white people for being so mean and evil. I went to school with whites and Indians, and we all got along. There were a few squabbles, but nothing big. We were just children. No one really wanted to get in trouble because you could get swat with a paddle by the teacher, or worse, when you got home. I lived in a neighborhood in Tacoma with all my mother's family nearby. Our next door neighbor was a little old white couple with a Model T Ford and honey beehives. There was a big mama who would gather all the neighborhood kids up in the summer and haul us in her open bed truck to pick green beans and strawberry fields of Puyallup to make money during the summer and to keep us busy. We spent it all on candy and movies. As a little girl, I walked by myself to Al's grocery store, my Aunt Jimmy, or Grandma's house. It never occurred to me that someone could snatch me up and take me away. Al was Jewish and kept a scary dog behind the high wooden fence. Someone said it was a bulldog, but I only heard it snarling and barking every time we approached the store. I would take a note from my mom to Al, and he would give me what was on the note. If I didn't have enough money, Al would write the amount she still owed down. Sometimes I would take penny candy, because I heard he was stingy and he treated black people badly. My parents moved from Arkansas to Tacoma to get away from the bad white people. They never wanted to move back. When we were in a car accident, my dad was really hurt. He was later told by a white lawyer that he could have gotten my dad a million dollars if he was white. I wondered why my dad never got a different lawyer. But still, it was enough money for us to move. We moved from the house that had the hole in the floor that my sister slipped into and scratched her leg, away from where my little hand had reached up the kitchen counter, spilling a cup of hot coffee on my arm, away from the railroad tracks where the hobos would come to the door for coffee or something to eat, away from my cousins, my grandmother, big mama, neighbors with goats, the Model T Ford, and my friends. We moved up the hill to an all-white neighborhood. I was not happy. Other than Maria, who was Mexican, I was it. I hated it. My teacher seemed nice, but when I first walked into the classroom, all the heads turned in my direction, and it looked like their little eyes were going to pop out of their heads. To me, they looked stupid. Stupid like the kids on television with their faces made ugly with hate. I should have been the one scared of them. But I wasn't. I was ready to beat them up if any of them ever put ketchup or mustard on me. There was a fat boy who followed me the four blocks home from school, calling me the N-word. I wanted to slap him and call him fat, but I didn't, because I didn't want to get in trouble. I told my mom what happened, and she walked me to school the next day and right into the principal's office. I don't know what happened, but that boy never called me the N-word again. I even tried to be my friend when I beat the mess out of him at ping pong. We were just children. But what I learned was when adults step in and do the right thing, children will follow and learn to do the right thing. <laughs>